Hi everyone, in this video I will be explaining the polynomial chapter. So here first let us uh, learn the basic things of polynomials that is the definition, degree of the polynomial, types of the polynomials and zeros of the polynomials. After learning all this I will be explaining the second exercise from the polynomials. So first let us learn what is the definition of the polynomial so before going to the definition of polynomial let us know what is the meaning of an algebraic expression so algebraic expression uh, it is the combination of constants and variables connected by fundamental operations so you know the constants constants are the fixed values and variables which has various values so when these constants and variables are connected by the fundamental operations that is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division we get an algebraic expression. An algebraic expression like for example uh, 3x is an algebraic expression because uh, 3 and x are connected by multiplication so it is consisting one term so it is one of the algebraic expression or when we take 3x plus 5 so here also uh, the variables and the constants are connected by the addition sign and multiplication sign so this is another, another algebraic expression so when you when you come to the polynomial uh, a polynomial is an algebraic expression in which the exponents the exponents of all variables the exponents of all variables should be a whole number it should be a whole number compulsorily uh, the variables the exponents of all the variables should be whole number like so the exponent is 0 year the exponent is 1 year 2 year etc it, it cannot be a negative number it should not be a negative integer exponents must be exponents must be a positive number means uh, a whole number then such algebraic expressions are called as polynomials in case if it is if the polynomial is polynomial in x equals to x square plus 1 by x so this is not a polynomial because x is present in the denominator when you write this in numerator it becomes x raised to the power minus 1 so in that case it is not the exponent is not a whole number exponent is not a whole number so such cases in such cases that they are not the polynomials like for example another thing like square root of x square root of x also is not a polynomial because when you write this in the index form it can be written as x raised to the power 1 by 2 so the exponent is not a whole number so it is a fraction so we cannot consider such uh, expressions as polynomials so hope you all understood this here when all the exponents must be whole numbers then they are called as such expressions are called as polynomials then moving on to degree of a polynomial so degree of a polynomial is actually the highest power the highest power of the variable in a polynomial the highest power the highest power is called as degree of the polynomial like for example you uh, you take a polynomial like uh, y square plus 10x y square plus 10y plus 7 so in this the exponents are in the first term the exponent is 2 in the second term there is no exponent which means it is 1 in the third term there is no exponent which can be considered as 0 so in this the highest power is 2 so the uh, degree of this polynomial is 2 degree of this polynomial is 2 the highest power of the variable is called as degree of the polynomial then we can classify the polynomials based on the number of terms and also based on the degree of polynomials so based on the number of terms we can classify the polynomials into monomial binomial trinomial then quadrinomial etc quadrinomial quadrinomial so mono the we know the prefix the meaning of the prefix mono is one so if if 
if a polynomial is consisting only one term then we call it as monomial like 3x 8x square 11xy all these are the monomials then binomial so by means two so any polynomial consisting two terms then we call it as binomial like 6x square plus x this is one binomial 3x plus 4 is another binomial so like this we can have many binomials then trinomial tri means three any expression or polynomial consisting three terms then we call it as trinomial like example x square plus 4x plus 4 is one of the trinomial quaternomial means which is consisting four terms a polynomial consisting four terms is called as a quadrinomial so uh, next moving on to the types of polynomials based on degree of the polynomial so if the degree of the polynomial is one if the highest power of the polynomial is one then such polynomials are called as linear polynomials and uh, the standard form of such polynomials will be a x plus b where a and b are real numbers and a is not equal to zero real numbers it can be any number so a and b can be any number it can be a rational number or irrational number it can be any number but a should not be zero if a becomes zero what will happen for example uh, if a is zero then in the in a x plus b this whole term becomes zero when this complete term becomes zero what is remaining only b is remaining that is constant b is constant here so the constant is not a linear polynomial because the highest power of this highest power of the constant is zero highest power of the constant is zero and here the highest power cannot be one if a becomes zero because if a is zero a into x zero into x will become zero therefore there will be only constant so we cannot consider that as a linear polynomial similarly quadratic polynomial uh, any polynomial whose degree is 2 then which is called as quadratic polynomial and the standard form of the quadratic polynomial is ax square plus bx plus c so where a b and c are real numbers a b and c are real numbers and a cannot be 0 I think you all understood now why a cannot be 0 if a becomes 0 the first term this this term becomes 0 when this term becomes 0 we will be having only bx plus c and whose highest d highest power will be 1 then if the highest power is 1 then it becomes a linear polynomial but not a quadratic polynomial similarly for a cubic polynomial if the degree is 3 it is called as cubic polynomial and ax cubed plus bx square plus cx plus d is the standard form of the cubic polynomial and uh, whose uh, where a b c d are real numbers again a is not equal to 0 if a becomes 0 if the first term becomes that means the term containing 3 as the degree 3 as the exponent if that term becomes 0 then we will be having a polynomial with a degree 2 and which cannot be considered as a cubic polynomial so next one next there is actually one more thing that is biquadratic polynomial where the degree is 4 for biquadratic polynomial the degree is 4 biquadratic biquadratic polynomial for in this the degree is 4 yes next moving on to zeros are roots of a polynomial so z what do you mean by zeros are roots of a polynomial the value of the variable the value of the vari variable which makes the polynomial zero the value of the variable the value of the variable which makes the polynomial zero like for example we take a polynomial like x plus 3 so x plus 3 is a polynomial what value of x makes this polynomial zero what value of x makes this polynomial zero that is minus 3 so if we take minus 3 in the place of x then it becomes 0 therefore x equals to minus 3 x equals to minus 3 is called as 0 of a polynomial so the value of the variable which makes the polynomial 0 
is called as zero of the polynomial or root of the polynomial so similarly zero may be a zero of a polynomial zero may be a zero of a polynomial which means in some cases uh, the value of the variable uh, can be zero which makes the polynomial zero like for example you take a polynomial like 3x so here what value of x makes this zero that is zero only z3 into zero is equal to zero so x is equal to zero x is equal to zero makes this polynomial zero that is why zero may be a zero of the polynomial then moving on to linear polynomial for linear polynomial linear polynomial will be having only one zero exactly one zero and quadratic polynomial can have at most two zeros at most means maximum two zeros it can have maximum two zeros then cubic polynomial cubic uh, cubic polynomial also can have at most three zeros maximum three zeros which means maximum three zeros means it can it can have three zeros or it can have two zeros or it can have one zero or it can have it can have only no it can have no zeros so maximum means maximum two zeros means it can have two zeros or one zero or no zero similarly at most three zeros means it can it can have three zeros or two zeros or one zero or it has no zero and next geometrical meaning of the zeros of a polynomial geometrical meaning of the zeros means if you draw the graph for any polynomial if you draw the graph for any polynomial how it is present in the graph how it is uh, how the polynomial is represented by the graph so like when you come to geometrical meaning of the zeros for example if you take if you draw the graph for any polynomial if you draw the graph for a linear polynomial always the linear polynomial will uh, intersect if you take a polynomial in x if you take a polynomial in x it will intersect the x axis at only one point it will intersect the x axis at only one point and also for a linear polynomial it will be always a straight line for a linear polynomial the graph will be always a straight line and if you take for a quadratic polynomial the graph of the quadratic polynomial usually will be in the, in the shape of u will be in the shape of u which is this shape is also called as parabola this shape is called as parabola so as we know that uh, in, in most of the quadratic polynomials this parabola intersects x axis at two different points in most of the cases in some cases this parabola intersects the x axis at only one point in some cases it will intersect the x axis at only one point in some cases it won't intersect the x axis which means the quadratic polynomial can have two zeros or one zero or no zero if it is intersecting the x axis at two points it has two zeros if it is intersecting the x axis at one point it has one zero and if it is intersecting if it is not intersecting the x axis at no point uh, if it is not intersecting a uh, x axis then it has no zeros so number of zeros of a polynomial is the number of times the graph intersects the x axis so if it is if this is for polynomial in x if the polynomial in x will intersect the x axis at some points and that will give you the number of zeros number of zeros of the polynomials and relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial for linear polynomial uh, the standard form of the linear polynomial is ax plus b and uh, zero if you consider alpha is the zero of the alpha is the zero of the linear polynomial then always alpha will be in the form of minus b by a and uh, for quadratic polynomial for quadratic polynomial the sum of the zeros will be always equals to minus b by a and uh, alpha into beta equals to the product of the zeros will be always in the always equal to c by a 
so where a b and c are the coefficients of the polynomial so this is the relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial relationship between zeros and coefficients of a polynomial and then um, if alpha and z alpha and beta are the zeros or roots of the quadratic polynomial then the polynomial can be written in the form of k times x square plus minus of alpha plus beta into x plus alpha into beta so if you know the zeros of any polynomial then you can write the polynomial in this form where k is a constant where k is any number other than zero where k is any number other than zero it's a non zero constant now let us solve the problems from exercise 2.2 first main first one find the zeros of the following quadratic polynomials and verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients so first let us find the zeros of this polynomial and then let us verify the relationship between zeros and the coefficients so to find the zeros of the polynomial we need to factorize the given quadratic polynomial into the uh, into the product of two linear polynomials that means we need to factorize this quadratic polynomial and uh, after getting two linear factors of the quadratic polynomial we equate each factor to zero and then we can find the zero of this polynomial so here the polynomial is x square minus 2x minus 8 so let us take the sum of the zeros in sum of this let us use the to factorize the quadratic polynomial let us use the sum and product rule that is uh, we can split the middle term using the sum and product rule so here to split the middle term first let me i let us identify the two numbers which satisfy this sum and product here the sum is the coefficient here the sum is the coefficient of x so the sum is minus 2 and the product let us take the product as the product of it is the product of constant and the coefficient of x square so here the coefficient of x square is 1 so multiply the coefficient of x square with the constant and these two together the product of 1 and minus 8 is taken as 8 so i think hope you all understood here sum is the coefficient of x that is minus 2 product is the product of the coefficient of x square and the constant that is minus 8 into 1 is minus 8 in case if the coefficient of x square is 2 2 into minus 8 you should take that is minus 16 you should take but here it is 1 so you should take minus 8 now which two numbers will satisfy these two conditions that means by adding two numbers you should get minus 2 and multiplying the same two numbers we should get minus 8 so the two numbers are it is minus 4 and plus 2 so if you add minus 4 and plus 2 you will get minus 2 and if you multiply the same two numbers that is minus 4 into 2 then you will get minus 8 so here basically the product is negative the product is negative so if the product is negative one of the numbers must be negative one of the numbers must be negative and we understood that one of the numbers must be negative means the other number should be positive then if you look at the sign of the sum when you look at when you see the sign of the sum if the sign of the sum is negative and we also know that one is positive and one is negative here one number is negative and one number is positive we got we got this from the product from the product we came to know that one one number should be negative and one number should be positive now when you look at the sign of the sum the sign of the sum is negative that means uh, when you add one positive number and one negative number if you are getting the sum as negative then greater number should be negative compulsorily greater number should be negative so based on that we can take minus 4 greater number as negative and smaller number as positive so here 
now let us split the middle term uh, using minus 4x and plus 2x so let me write the first term that is x square uh, and last term minus 8 as it is and split the middle term as my mi minus 4x and plus 2x split the middle term using the two numbers minus minus 4 and plus 2 so minus 4x and plus 2x now let us factorize let us let us equate this to 0 because we are finding the zeros of the polynomial so now let us group them grouping method so group the first two terms and group the last two terms in such a way that each group will have a common factor and now from the first group the common factor is x now divide the first term by common factor that is x square divided by x you get the quotient x so write that inside the bracket similarly divide the second term by the common factor x that is minus 4x by x you get the quotient minus 4 so write minus 4 inside the bracket so first group is factorized we got x into x minus 4 now from the second group that is plus 2x and minus 8 we have the common factor plus 2 because 2 ones are 2 and 2 fours are 8 so we can take plus 2 as a common factor and divide the uh, divide 2x by 2 we get x as the quotient so write x in the inside the bracket and also divide minus 8 by 2 we get the quotient minus 4 so write minus 4 inside the bracket and write equal to 0 so now we factorized by grouping the uh, terms of the polynomial now we got x minus 4 as common now in both the terms so consider x into x minus 4 as one term and uh, 2 into x minus 4 as another term and now we can take x minus 4 as one factor means common factor so if we take x minus 4 as common factor from the first part from the first part x into x minus 4 if you divide x into x minus 4 by the common factor like x into x minus 4 by x minus 4 we get the quotient x so write the quotient x inside the bracket and divide the second term also second term also that is 2 into x minus 4 by the common factor x minus 4 we get the quotient plus 2 so write that quotient here and equate it to 0 so now e equate each linear factor to 0 we got two linear factors one is x minus 4 and another one is x plus 2 so equating each factor to the 0 like x minus 4 equals to 0 we get x equals to 4 transposing minus 4 to RHS and another factor x plus 2 equals to 0 transpose plus 2 to the RHS we get x equals to minus 2 and now x equals to 4 and x equals to minus 2 are the zeros of the polynomial so after getting the zeros of the polynomial let us verify the relationship between the zeros and the coefficients so here the zeros let us take the zeros as alpha alpha is uh, alpha is um, 4 and uh, beta the other zero is minus 2 so alpha is 4 and beta is minus 2 and now let us write the coefficients comparing this comparing the polynomial with the standard form that is ax square plus bx plus c let us write the coefficients a value is 1 because in the place of a the numerical coefficient of x square is 1 so a is equals to 1 the numerical coefficient of x is minus 2 so b equals to minus 2 and constant c c is minus 8 so like this compare the uh, compare the given polynomial with the standard form of the polynomial and note down the coefficients like this and now let us uh, write the relationship between the zeros and coefficients first relation is alpha plus beta equals to minus b by a so let us substitute all the values to verify alpha is 4 and beta is minus 2 so plus of minus 2 is minus 2 we can write directly and minus of b value is minus 2 divided by a value is 1 
so 4 minus 2 is 2 and here minus of minus 2 is plus 2 divided by 1 is 2 itself so first relation is verified similarly the other relation the product of the zeros is c by a so alpha is 4 beta is minus 2 and here c value is minus 8 a value is 1 so in the lhs let us multiply 4 into minus 2 which is minus 8 and in the rhs minus 8 by 1 is minus 8 so the second relation also is verified and then we can write that hence verified and let us do the second sum from this now so the second question is find the zeros of the following quadratic polynomials and verify the relation so here let us use the same method that splitting the middle term using sum and product rule so here the sum is as you know that sum is the coefficient of x that means s here because the middle term so that is minus 4 and then product is is the product of constant and the product uh, constant we should multiply the constant and the coefficient of the square term coefficient of the square term so 4 into plus 1 so 4 into plus 1 is 4 so sum is minus 4 and the product is 4 now what are the two numbers that satisfy these two conditions look at the sign of the product when the product is plus both the numbers should be plus or both the numbers should be minus so there are two possibilities for the product as plus for getting the product as plus we have two possibilities so here look at the sum now so sum is negative so by adding two positive values by adding two positive values positive values you won't get positive means negative you won't get negative so we can't take the first condition if you add two negative values if you add two negative values you will get negative value so we can take the second condition which means both the numbers should be negative so from the product we can come to know both either both the numbers should be positive or both the numbers should be negative so look at the sign of the sum the sign of the sum is negative so to by adding two negative numbers only the sum becomes negative so we should select both the numbers as negative so now let us split the middle term by find means first let us find the numbers which two numbers will satisfy both the conditions so since we know that both the numbers should be minus we can select the numbers as minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 and minus 2 is minus 4 multiplying the same two numbers we get plus 4 so we can split the middle term as minus 2s and minus 2s and plus 1 equals to 0 now let us take the uh, common factor of 4s and 4s square minus 2s the common factor is 2s so in both in both the terms 2 is present because 2 2s are 4 and here 2 is there so 2 you can take common here s square and s in both of them s is there so you can take s also as common now divide the first term 4s square by 2s we get the quotient 2 1s are 2 2s are here also s square by s is s so 2s is the quotient so write the quotient inside the bracket divide the second term minus 2s by 2s everything will get cancelled we get minus 1 as the quotient and similarly from the second from the second group so here one very important thing to be noted when the third term when the third term is negative compulsorily you take negative as common factor so from minus 2s and plus 1 there is no common factor so you take uh, since the third term is negative take minus as common always compulsorily and then there is no more common factor write 1 as common factor so now divide minus 2s by minus 1 minus minus cancel the quotient is 2s so you can write 2s here then divide plus 1 by minus 1 we get the quotient minus 1 so write minus 1 here so now again take the common factor 2s minus 1 so common binomial this is the common binomial 2s minus 1 and now dividing the first term by 2s minus 1 we get the quotient 2s so write that here and dividing the second term divide the second term that is minus 1 into 2s minus 1 by the common factor 2s minus 1 we get the quotient minus 1 now equate 
each term each linear factor to the zero and find the uh, zeros of the polynomial so here the linear factors are 2s minus 1 equals to 0 so 2s equals to 1 transposing minus 1 to rhs we get 1 so s is equal to 1 by 2 similarly the other one also 2s minus 1 equals to 0 so the same way we get s is equal to 1 by 2 itself so both the zeros are same here so here both the zeros are same that is 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 now let us go to the verification so here let us take alpha as 1 by 2 beta also as 1 by 2 and now compare this compare the given polynomial with the standard form that is a x square plus b x plus c and note down the coefficients a value is 4 and b value is minus 4 b value is minus 4 and c value is 1 c value is 1 constant so now let us uh, write the sum of the product sum of the zeros alpha plus beta is equal to minus b by a alpha is 1 by 2 beta also is 1 by 2 and minus of b value is minus 4 divided by a value is 4 so in the lhs half plus half 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 half plus half is 1 and in the rhs minus half minus 4 is plus 4 4 divided by 4 is 1 so one relation is verified and second relation is alpha into beta equals to c by a alpha is 1 by 2 beta is 1 by 2 c value is 1 a value is 4 so multiplying the lhs uh, numerator into numerator 1 into 1 is 1 denominator into denominator 2 into 2 is 4 rhs is already 1 by 4 so the second relation also is verified so we can write n's verified so dear students please uh, if you please subscribe to my channel and if you have any doubt please let me know through comment box in the comment you can post your questions whatever the doubt you have i can immediately make a video on that and post it back if you feel if you feel this is useful please share it with all your friends and make it useful thank you so much please subscribe to my channel